Good evening. Welcome to Expat in Science. I'm your host Raju Mandhian. At Expat in Science, we look into the lives of expats, foreigners and immigrants who live in this country and make this their home. Today, we have a representative from a community of 350,000 Koreans who have made the Philippines their home. Our guest tonight, a gentleman by the name of Art Park, a Korean born in America, cum laude from Harvard on English, in English literature and Juris Doctorate from the Vanderbilt Law University. He practiced litigation for 10 years in the US and now has moved to the Philippines and is a coach and a consultant for OCCI Consulting Company, one of the premier coaching companies in Asia. So good evening, Mr. Arn Park. Welcome to Expat Insights. Good evening, Raju. Always a pleasure. So what brought you to the Philippines, Art? Well, I first came to the Philippines after I married a Filipina a long time ago, back in 1989. And the first time I came here, I felt for some reason as if I were at home. Okay. I felt so comfortable being in this part of the world, um, being among the people here. Yeah. Even the energy of the country and the warm mm -hmm. weather and the people just, just made me feel happy and I really did feel at home. And, and this so was how many years ago? Back in 1989. 1989, that's like 21 years ago. <laughs> yes, a long time that's ago. That's a long time ago. So what do you like about the Philippines besides your wife and besides the Filipino people? Well, I'm going to answer your question by making a declaration. And Go ahead, then, make my day. Okay, and when I make this declaration, I'm going to ask the people in your audience to look for the truth of this declaration within themselves. So here's the declaration. Uh, you, you gotta, if you're going to make a de declaration to the audience, you've got to look at the camera. So there you go. Oh. Have a look at the camera. That's Over there. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's the declaration. The declaration is this. There is something special in the Philippines that the world needs. So if that is the truth behind why you and I and all the, the people in your 350, audience. 350,000 Koreans. All the Koreans here in the Philippines are here. Then... We know inside ourselves why we're here. So it's just a matter of discovering and manifesting that truth. So as there's, we live there's here. hidden treasure. It's a hidden treasure. And, and yes. since Koreans are coming here, this is not Yamashita. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. So what kind of treasure is it? It's really a treasure, I think, that has to do with what we're all going to be creating here together. Oh, the Filipinos and all these expats that are moving in here. Yes. So we'll discover something and build it. Any idea what that might be? Well, it could be at the level of energy. It could be at the level of an attitude toward life. It could be because of the potential of, of the country. It could be a combination of all these things. But for me and from what I hear from people that I talk to, there really is a calling that has brought many of us here to this country. And there's a reason why everybody stays. And if you look at the things that are happening here in this country, you can see that there is a collective evolution that's occurring. And, and you do not sense this in other countries that you travel or the other countries that you have lived in the past. You sense this here. I sense it in a particular way here that feels special to me. And I've talked to even Filipinos who were born in the U.S., who feel a calling to come back here. And I see it manifested in a very strong way among the youth in this country who are very idealistic and they're committed to creating a new Philippines. So you are saying, in, 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 a, in, a, in a different way, you're saying that uh, from the Philippines something will rise that will have an impact globally. Yes. Maybe it could be uh, something that's tangible, non-tangible, something human-driven, or something that is driven by the, by the universal energy. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. And it comes from that very specific declaration that there is something special here in the Philippines that the world needs. So what are the signs of this that you, as you're, a you're a consultant and a coach, mm -hmm. and a Korean, of course, so there's a slight amount of mysticism about you. So what are the <laughs> signs that you read, uh, Art? What are the signs? What are the signs that are visible to you? Some of the most basic signs have to do with what's here in this country to start with. It's almost like the structural components of this country. Because here, at least for me in my experience, Filipinos are naturally open 
and for me they have a lot of natural grace and mm. spirituality mm -hmm. and that has been proven uh, in many different ways but one way uh, this openness and grace has manifested is how easily people can come together for example like for the two people's uh, revolutions the people's power revolution yeah. yes exactly. or for Rondoy last year or for Londai. Exactly. And, uh, but this also does happen in other countries. It does happen, it happened in China. Remember during uh, the, ni the 90s, it happened in China, people came together. Mm -hmm. And it happens in India, it happens mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka, it happens in so, so many other countries. Mm -hmm. Why Philippines is, why does Philippines stand out for you? The Philippines stands out for me also because there is so much happening here. It's also true in other countries that there's a wide range of experience and people doing all kinds of things. But here, in terms of just spiritual matters, you see such a wide range of practices. And you see many highly evolved people um, teaching other people their own, uh, their own learnings and their own um, processes for moving everybody forward. Name, name a couple of people you know from the top of your mind, Filipinos or expats? Um, People who are ch ch creating the change or teaching stuff? Well, I just had dinner the other day with uh, someone who is a medium, who comes from the tradition of the spiritists. Um, are you familiar with those people? No, no. Um, back in, a long time ago in the Philippines, there were indigenous shamans. Like the ones on Mount Banahao. Uh, there are spir spiritual people in Mount Banahao. I think there are all kinds of things in <laughs> Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Tell, tell me your story. <laughs> tell me and your story. This is interesting. Yeah, some of them include uh, indigenous shaman yeah. called Babylon. And they called Babylon. That's a Tagalog word? Yes. As best as, as best as I can pronounce it. Say it again. Babylon. B A B A Y L A N. That sounds like Babylon, but that's okay. <laughs> so Babylon, all right? Yes. And uh, these indigenous shamans worked with the spirits of nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they did different things that had to do with healing and uh, philosophy about well, why we're here, even back in the old days. Yeah. And from what I understood of the history of the Babylon, when the Spanish came to this country, yeah. um, there were friars who came and they were Catholic. Mm -hmm. And they were actually also working with spirits. And what happened was the Babylon said, hey, look at, look at what these people are doing. They're working with a different set of spirits. So we're just going to switch to their group of spirits. Yeah. So the Babylon became the spiritists. And they, they formed a group called the Union de Espiritistas. And they, they became what are called trans mediums. And they did all kinds of healing and spiritual teaching. And they worked with the Catholic-based spirits. So wow. Jesus, Mary, St. Anthony. So it, it was actually interesting because the friars didn't quite understand what had happened. They thought it was a straight conversion. And then they realized, oh, wait, these, they're still doing shamanism. <laughs> they're just uh, using our uh, spirits. Hang on, hang on. You've taken me on a course that I didn't want to take you on. So uh, hang on. We, we gonna, we'll take a break. We'll come back to this. I do also want to find out about Koreans in the Philippines, besides Filipinos in the Philippines. So we'll take one minute. We'll take a one-minute break with Art Park, and we'll just com come right back to him. So stay with us. This is Raju Mandian at Expat Insights. Thank you for watching. Korean gentleman from USA, and he took us on a different plane and a different time with the Babylons and the Spiritists of the Philippines. So back to you, Art. Tell us more about this. This is interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, that's what makes this country so powerful and so potential and draws people from all, all across the world because of this hidden energy. Is that right? The hidden energy and also it's an example for me of the different kinds of practices that are happening here in the Philippines and the mm -hmm. possibilities for all of these different people who are doing different things to come to work together. So for example, when I was having dinner with this person, person from media. who is a medium, mm -hmm. he actually is interested in transformation and doing corporate consulting. And I am currently studying some organizational development technology that has to do with business consulting right. that involves something called presencing, which comes from the work of a rather well-known professor at MIT named Peter Senge. 
Now, presencing has presencing. Presencing, uh, like being present, but as a verb, which is a made-up word. Mm -hmm. But presencing has to do with what is being used now by businesses to solve complex, very practical problems. Like? Like, for example, with Toyota, when yeah. they had a problem with, ago, their, yeah. with their cars. Mm -hmm. So what a consultant would do yeah. would be to bring all the big players in a corporation into one room. And the, uh, the players of Toyota only. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but possibly um, suppliers too, or all people the related. related people. Yeah. yeah. All the main players. Mm -hmm. Bring them into one room. Yeah. And put them through certain processes that, at least according to the theory, allows them to tap into a collective knowing. And the bottom line, however it happens, is that they are able to y solve you, these problems. You need, you need to go slow. Okay. Collective knowing. Expand on that. Now, the present saying is one, bringing them together, and then what's collective knowing? According to the theory of Sangay, of Sangay, yeah. When you get all these people together, mm -hmm. if they become open enough and connected enough right. with each other, mm -hmm. they can begin to be fully present with each other, and then somehow sense what mm. needs to be done what needs to be fixed to solve to solve the, the crisis the in crisis. the market the market exactly or whatever the complex problem may be and do they go through any process of discussion or just being there is there a brainstorming session done or it's just being and then letting ideas pop up or is there a structure to making ideas pop up there is a structure yeah and so that that is very interesting um, but for me, what is most interesting is that it's ultimately so practical because you're talking about real businesses with real problems and whatever the theory is behind the method, you're getting things done and you're enacting change that, that works at the most practical level. So the reason why I mention this presencing is because when I was talking to this medium who is interested in corporate consulting, Whereas this medium is Filipino. He's Filipino. Yeah. Not an expat. All oh, right, not an expat, yeah. Um, and we were talking about all presencing itself. And is he, is he conversant with the uh, studies of Senge, or this was completely his own uh, belief system or value system that drove him to you? It's completely his own experience. But there were parallels between him and Senge's work. And the parallel is that when we were talking about presencing, we realized that presencing is actually the core of mediumship. Because mediumship is also about opening yourself up to some sort of greater knowing, maybe the higher aspects of your mind or some sort of universal knowledge. And it's the same process. So. We're looking to work together to see what new techniques we can develop. This is at OCCI. This, uh, is, at this is in conjunction with OCCI or this is totally on your own? This, uh, at this point, will be a project that I will do in conjunction with another project that I'm doing at OCCI. OCCI is currently involved in what's called uh, an ELIAS program. What is that? ELIAS stands for Emerging Leaders Innovating Across Sectors. Say that slowly one more time for the sure. camera. Sure. Emerging Leaders. Emerging Leaders Innovating Across Sectors. All right. And, and that's a project that's, by OCCI. That's a project. ELIAS Philippines is the project that OCCI is creating. Right. And ELIAS itself comes from the work of a no, another professor at MIT named Otto Scharmer, who works with Peter Senge and, in doing this presencing work. And what, does, what does Elias hope to create? 